Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1495, part two. Hey, in the last few videos, we have been trying to allocate invoice header amounts to the transaction line item table. And in last video and in this video, we're going to use Power Query. Now, wait a second. I already did 1495, and this is part two. That's because online Excel teammate Bill Sizzes watched the video and came up with a shorter solution. Now, the fundamental problem that we have and we're trying to solve is that we have two fact tables. And if we have invoice level numbers, shipping cost and invoice discount, those are for the whole invoice. This second fact table over here has line item or product level details where we can calculate the line sales for each line in the invoice. Anytime you have a different granularity or level of detail in two fact tables, it makes things difficult. And in particular, if we would like to slice using the product category and summarize sales, shipping, and discount, how in the world are we going to do that? Because product as a condition or criteria or filter is working on the invoice line level or the product level. So our goal is to allocate both of these numbers from the invoice total side down to the line item side. And then we'll make this report. Now here's all the steps I did in Power Query in the last video. Here's the steps that Bill Sizzes proposed. And it comes down to this. We did two multiplications in Power Query. These were at the line level. Then when we grouped, we jumped up to the invoice level or header level. Later in this query, I then merged one two times to bring back the line item detail. Bill Sizzes says you don't have to do that, because guess what? You already calculated with our two multiplication the line item sales and invoice weight. So when you group, yes, it's going to group those numbers up into the invoice numbers. But we can do a third grouping where we simply take all the records and group them up in an extra column. And then later, we will not have to merge to get back line level. We'll just expand the line items that we saved up from this grouping step. So this is going to be an amazing video. Let's go over to the sheet, Tables for Power Query. All right, so we have our three tables, the header or invoice level, line item or product level, and this is our product lookup table where we have product and we'll have to access or look up the weight. Now, in order to use Power Query, you either have to have Office 365, Excel 2016, where you have Get and Transform on the left, or if you have just flat Excel 2016, it's on the right. 2013 to 10, you have to search and download Power Query. Now, in order to get data into Power Query from an Excel sheet, they have to be in Excel tables. Now, queries and connection, in earlier versions, you'd have a queries button in the Get and Transform data group. But here we have queries and connection. So I click that. I've already imported two tables. I'm going to import the third table. I click in a single cell, go up to Get and Transform, and from Table or Range. Here's the Power Query Editor. That's a fine name. I'm going to come over to Queries and Expand because I have three separate queries that are bringing the data from Excel into Power Query. Now we're going to start off by duplicating line item invoice details. So I come over to the left, right click, duplicate. That actually copies the code. You can see the same exact code over here. Now actually, there's the step name, and we want to rename this. So I'm going to highlight this. And this will be our final product report. So I'm going to call it product report. We actually don't need change type, so I simply X that out, and I have just the source. Now our first step is this is the line item table. You can see one, two, three line items for invoice 125447. I want to multiply quantity and unit price. So I click on quantity, hold control, click on unit price, come up to add column, over to from number standard, and multiply. 
That adds a new step over here. And up in our formula bar, it adds table.addColumns function. There are four arguments here, the previous step, the name of the new column, the calculation, and the type. I'm going to double click multiplication, and we're going to give this a smart name, a smarter name than multiplication. Line sales and enter. Now, the beautiful thing about this is line sales. There's one, two, three line sales already calculated for invoice one, two, five, four, four, seven. Now, when we use the grouping feature in just a moment, it's going to group by this column and it will aggregate or add all of these. But we can also group and save in a separate column one, two, three records, which of course we can use later. Now we need to merge this table to look up the product weight that we can multiply by quantity. So I come over to Home, Combine, Merge dropdown, Merge Queries. This is our lookup in essence. We Excel people think of this as a lookup. This is the many side. There are many different invoice numbers. I need to look up in my lookup table, D product. Select the first column or the column with a unique list, just like VLOOKUP would come over here and find a match and then return this. In databasing, this is a join. And it's going to do a left outer join, all from the first, matching from the second. Now when I click OK, it's going to bring all of these columns back for each individual record. If I click right here, you can see since this is the one side, it shows exactly one record. The weight is what we're after. So I come up and I expand, uncheck everything, uncheck that one too, and say, hey, I want to look up only weight. Click OK. Now we have our weight. Hold Control, click on Quantity, up to Add Column, Standard, and Multiply. Double click that unhelpful name, Line Weight. Hopefully I spelled weight right. And Enter. Now, this is the exciting step that I skipped over last time. Absolutely, we can select invoice number and group to add these. But we're going to save the records too. I've selected invoice number. Right click, down to Group By. When I select Group By, this is the SQL method of doing a pivot table or some ifs. Now, I'm going to click Advanced because I want to do one, two, three group buys. The first two group buys we will do are similar to pivot tables and some ifs, meaning we're doing some aggregate calculation. But the third one will be different. All right, we're going to do it by invoice number to get up to the header level, column name. I'm going to give it a smart name like invoice sales. We have line sales and invoice sales, so it's easy for us to understand. Sum, and then I need to sum up, line sales. Add aggregation, invoice weight, sum, and we're going to sum the line weight. And this is the magic of Power Query and Group By. And this I'm going to call something smart, records for invoice. This is something a pivot table and sum ifs cannot do. I'm going to select all rows. Actually, I shouldn't speak because Excel can do anything. We could figure out how to get all the records matching in some crazy array formula. But this step here, and we're not going to select anything here because it's just going to get all the rows for each invoice. It will be stored as a separate table for each line in our group by invoice number. When I click OK. I have the two aggregate numbers that we need to make our calculations to allocate the proper discount and shipping down to the line level. But we also have this. If I click off to the side, not on the table, but off to the side in the green, there it is. This is the magic of Bill Sizzes' tip. Might as well save these records up for each invoice, because guess what? We already calculated line sales and line weight. In the last video, I went ahead and duplicated these calculations in the second and third merge. All right, now we've grouped by, we have invoice, but we need to merge this or join this or look up the correct shipping and discount amounts, because this table right here is at the header or invoice level. So I go back up to Home, Merge, Merge. 
invoice number. Now we go back to our fact table for header. Invoice number. Left outer join, click OK. Now it's going to give us a table. We're going to expand, uncheck everything. All we need is invoice shipping and invoice discount. Click OK. Now the granularity here, of course, is the invoice level or header level. Discount, shipping, and sales, and the total weight, all at the right granularity. Now we have one more calculation to make at the header or invoice level. I'm going to select Invoice Discount. Hold Control, click on Invoice. I selected Discount first, so when I go to Add Column, Standard, I can divide and it will know that the first click is the numerator. So I click. We can see that over there. Double click. We're going to get rid of that silly name and name it something smart. This is an invoice level or header level, so I call it Invoice, Percent Discount, and Enter. Now I have the invoice weight that I'm going to use in the denominator over in the line item table. And I'm going to have in the numerator the line item weight, which of course, when I click off to the side, not on the table, but off to the side, look at that. I've saved up the line weight. Not only that, but the invoice percent discount, I can use that to multiply by each line sales. All right, so now we can expand which for every invoice, we can see for this particular record right here in the invoice header level table, there are three sublines for our invoice. So when I click Expand, these three lines will be matched up with this one line. And that same process will be done for each invoice. So we've saved up earlier steps. I'm going to unselect everything. And I'm going to need product, because that's going to be our condition or criteria or filter for our final report. And line sales and line weight. When I click OK, that is absolutely beautiful. We have our three repeated invoice numbers. We can use this in the denominator. There's the line weight for the numerator. That'll be our allocation percentage rate for invoice shipping. Then we have our line sales, which of course we can multiply by our percentage discount. So I'm going to select Invoice Percentage Discount Line Sales, Add Column from Number Standard, and Multiply. I'm going to have to scroll over a bit. We can see that calculation there. Double click Multiplication. And finally, this is the line discount. So we have allocated from the header level to the line level, the discount amount. Now for shipping, we're going to have to build a custom column. So add column, custom column. I'm going to call this something smart, line shipping. And our formula will be much easier than the last video because we don't have to duplicate line weight. I've already saved it up from an earlier step. So I'm going to double click, and there it is. That's going to be for each line in the line item table divided by invoice weight. That'll be a different percentage for each line to allocate our shipping. So to allocate shipping, we do times invoice shipping. Click OK. And look at that. Now, I'm going to change it up a little bit. In the last video, we didn't round this. And if we wanted it to come out exactly the same amount as the total originally, we could leave it like this and just use number formatting. But I'm going to change this up. I'm going to go back to Insert Multiplication. And we can see Table.Add Column. The calculation comes after each. So all it is is a straight multiplication. I can actually add the round function. Now over in Excel and DAX, it's round and it does standard rounding. Over here in Power Query and places like Access and VBA in Excel, it does banker's rounding or halfway even rounding. And the function we use is number.round with the correct case. Open parentheses. I come to the end, comma 2, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, now I've added that function to our line. We could do the same thing for shipping if we wanted. There's the each. That's the calculation for each line. Number dot round with correct case. Very carefully come to the end. Comma 2, close parentheses, and Enter. 
And now we have the three columns we need, line shipping, line discount, and line sales. And we need to group by to get our final report based on product. So now we come up to product, right click, group by. We want to select advanced. The first column will be called sales. We will sum by line sales. Next aggregation, this will be shipping, sum, and we'll do line shipping. The third aggregation, we'll call this discount, sum of line discount. One, two, three, based on product, when I click OK, that is amazing. We took our original shipping and discount at the header level, properly allocated it to the line level, and now we can use the criteria condition filter of product for sales, shipping, and discount. Now let's close and load, and we're going to come up to home, close and load, close and load two. I'm going to say as a table on a new sheet, and actually, we're going to get two tables because I forgot to load the product table as a connection only. We can see there's two tables loaded. I do not want this loaded, so I'm going to come over to the sheet, sheet 7, right click, delete, click OK. And now we can see product is listed as connection only. I'm going to click on product. That jumps me to the sheet. I'm going to double click the sheet name. That's not a good name. Product report and enter. Now I'm going to add some number formatting over here in Excel. Highlight Control-1, Currency, and Enter. And that is absolutely beautiful. We went from our two fact tables with a different grain in each. We allocated shipping and discount down to the line item table. And now we can use the product condition to calculate sales, shipping, and discount by product. All right, that was a lot of fun with Power Query. Thanks to our online Excel teammate, Bill Sizzes, for the shorter code. And in our next video, we'll get an opportunity to vote for which method we like best for allocating invoice header amounts down to the transaction line item table. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is fun. We'll see you next video.